If you're still trying to manage your customers in a spreadsheet, stop, okay? Just stop. It's like trying to run Netflix on a VHS player. Hi everyone, I'm Talita. I am a marketing automation expert and HubSpot consultant. Today I'm going to show you how to use the HubSpot CRM. Step by step, beginner friendly, no credit card needed. By the end of this video, you'll have your contacts neatly organized and actually enjoy using your HubSpot CRM. Okay, so first of all, what is HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM, Customer Relationship Management Tool, and also an all-in-one business tool that helps you manage your customers, sales, and marketing all from one place. Think of it as your business command center. Instead of juggling spreadsheets, random email chains, and you know sticky notes, <laughs> HubSpot brings everything together so you can actually stay organized. Okay, so how do you get started with HubSpot? Okay, so to get started, head over to hubspot.com. I'll also drop the link in the description below. Once you're there, click on the big get started free button and create an account. After that, HubSpot will ask you a few questions to personalize your experience. Hey, if you don't have any company information to add, no stress, just, you know, add something fictional just so that you can get set up and start learning. Once you create your account, you're going to be redirected to the inside part of your account. I don't know a better way of explaining this. Let's explore the HubSpot navigation menu together so that you know exactly where everything lives, okay? So account and settings, up in the right corner of the screen, you'll find your account menu. It usually shows your profile picture or initials. This is where you'll manage things like your user profile, billing and subscription plans, okay? Settings, located in the gear icon, this is where you'll find global configuration options options for objects, we're going to talk about them later, properties, users and teams, pipelines, integrations, security, and defaults. Okay, let's go to what matters. CRM, Customer Relationship Management Tool. This is the foundation of HubSpot. Here is where you host and manage your data, such as your email list. Inside the CRM, you'll find contacts, people that you interact with, right? Potential customers, customers, and so on. Companies, the organizations those people belong to. Deals, your sales opportunities. Tickets, which are basically support requests, as well as other elements. We'll talk about them later in detail, but for now, all you need to know is this. The CRM is where you organize all the data you have on customers, where they work, and what you need to do for them, including tasks, as well as lists and other elements. Marketing and content hubs, tools to attract and nurture leads. Things like email marketing, forms, ads, social media, landing pages, website pages, blog, content, and more. Sales and Commerce Hub, everything for closing deals and managing revenue. Quotes, payments, invoices, payment links, products, subscriptions, and so on. Service Hub, this is for supporting your customers. For example, you can create a live chat with HubSpot, knowledge base, ticket pipelines to track customer issues, data management, and also reporting. These are the sections where you're going to see your reporting dashboards, analytics, as well as other types of reporting tools to understand the quality of your data and how your business is performing. Automation, workflows to help you save time by automating repetitive tasks like sending follow-up emails or automating tasks for your sales team. Him, for example. For beginners, we'll stay mostly inside the CRM tab since that's where your contacts live. But yeah, it's helpful to know the full menu so you can see how all the pieces connect as your business grows. One important thing, HubSpot has different types of paid plans and some features are exclusive to certain tiers. For example, some tools inside the Content Hub are only available if you have the Content Hub professional subscription. The same goes for the other hubs, as they are called. This is important to know in case you're using a free account, right? Your type of plan determines what exactly you can access inside HubSpot. All right, let's dive deeper into the CRM. Inside HubSpot, there are different types of information you can store and manage. These are called objects. The main ones you're going to use are contacts, the actual people you're talking to, right? Leads, prospects, customers, partners. Then you also have companies. These are the organizations those people belong to. Then you have deals, your sales opportunities, right? Like a potential contract or a project you're trying to close. And you also have tickets. These are requests for support or service so you can track and resolve customer issues. 
Think of objects as the building blocks of your CRM. Everything you do in HubSpot ties back to one of these. Now, let's look at an actual example. You might see a dummy contact inside your CRM, okay, CRM contacts. You might see a dummy contact called Maria Johnson. Uh, HubSpot includes this to show you how things work. So go ahead and click on Maria's name. This brings us into the contact profile page, which is kind of like their social media profile, but for business, right? It's where you can see everything you know about a person and every interaction they've had with you. On the left sidebar, you'll see their key details like email address, phone number, job title, and things like that. In the middle section, you'll find their activity timeline, emails they've opened or clicked, meetings they booked with you, conversations from the live chat, and much more. Basically, everything that happened with that person. On the right sidebar, you'll see everything that is connected to them. For example, the company they work for, any deals that we have in progress with them, or even tickets they've submitted. In this case here, I associated Maria with the company Hollywood Stars and a deal called Hollywood Stars New Deal. This page gives you a 360 degree view of the relationship with that contact, so you're never really guessing about who they are or what's happened with them. One of the most powerful things about HubSpot is the ability to associate objects. The whole idea of adding different types of information, contacts, companies, deals, tickets, is that you connect them together. For example, if you're running a B2B business, you want to create both the contact, you know, the person you're talking to, and the company they work at, and then associate them. From there, you can link any deals or tickets back to both the contact and the company. Why does this matter? Because having everything associated keeps your tasks streamlined and your team on the same page. No one has to dig through emails or spreadsheets to figure out what's going on, it's all right there inside HubSpot. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about properties. Properties are simply data points that you use to save information about an object. Notice that I said object, not contacts. That's because properties aren't just for contacts. You can save information about companies, deals, tickets, and other objects too. Right now, we're looking at contact properties. Let's do a quick exercise together. On Maria's contact profile, click on Actions, then click on View All Properties. This shows you every property available for contacts contacts inside your HubSpot account. Scroll down to the contact information section. Here, you'll see things like phone number, email, job title, city, country, and more. Now let's have a little fun. Find the property called job title. It's located here. This property is filled out, right? This is just because it's a dummy contact. Let's change what is inside this property. Uh, I'm going to delete salesperson and I'm going to add founder here. So the new job title will be founder. I'm going to click on save. And that's pretty much it. Add anything you want. CEO of snacks, professional cat herder, founder, whatever you want, whatever makes you laugh, right? And, and this is pretty much how you update a HubSpot property. You'll notice that properties come in different types. Some, like job title, are tax fields. You also have other properties that are filled out with dates, properties that are filled out with numbers, and there are some types of uh, menu properties. They're called drop-down menus. They have preset options you can choose. And here's the cool part about properties. The same way you can update these default properties that are here, you can also create your own custom properties inside HubSpot to track whatever matters most to your business. We'll cover that a bit later in the tutorial. Okay, let's learn how to add a new contact to HubSpot. Head to the CRM tab and then click on Contacts. Once you're there, click on where it says Create Contact. You'll see a form pop up with fields to fill in. Let's add a contact together. Feel free to use the same fictional information I'm using here. So, email. I'm going to copy what I have here. So, I'm just going to add Jane Doe. First name will be Jane. Last name will be Doe. Job title will be Marketing Manager. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll leave the rest to you. If you want to fill out more properties here, like phone number, you know, whatever else you want, uh, go for it. It's totally up to you how much detail you want to add to this point. Once you're done, click Create, and HubSpot will redirect you straight into Jane Doe's contact profile page. But Talita, what about my email list? It's huge. I cannot add people manually one by one. Now, let's learn how to import a list of contacts into HubSpot. In your CRM, click on Import. 
Choose import data. Just so that you know, there are other ways of bringing data into HubSpot, like through app integrations, but we're keeping it simple today, okay? So click here and then click on start and import. Before you actually upload anything, you need to have your data sitting in a file, right? Here is my Google spreadsheet as an example. A couple of important tips. Make sure each and every piece of information has its own column, right? First names in one column, last names in another column, email, mobile phone number, country, and so on and so on and so on. Double check that your column headers are clear and match HubSpot property names as closely as possible. This makes the mapping process much easier. In this case here, all I have to do is download this file as CSV. And now let me go back to HubSpot. All right, HubSpot asks, which type of data are you importing? Pause the video for a second and think about it. We are adding, what, what kind of data are we adding? Let's take a look at the file. We're adding information about people, right? So basically, we're importing contact information inside HubSpot, contacts. We are not, you know, importing information about companies or deals or tickets, we're importing contacts. So we'll select this option here. Good. Now, the next step is to drag and drop your file. Now let me walk through HubSpot's mapping process. This is where you match each column in your file to the correct property inside HubSpot, making sure that, you know, for example, the email column goes into the email property and so on and so on and so on. This can be changed, right? So if something is being incorrectly imported as a contact property, you can change it here. You can change the property that you want to be, that you want to have this map to and so on and so on. Once everything looks good, you can finish the import by choosing whether you want to create a list from this import and by making sure that this option here is ticked. HubSpot just wants to make sure that you're actually authorized to contact these people. In this case here, it doesn't really matter. It's just an exercise. So finish import. Good. And just like that, the new contacts are added to my HubSpot CRM. You know what's cool about this? If I go to anyone's contact profile, I can actually see that they were created from an import. Mm. Talita, I want to save information about people's favorite ice cream flavor in my HubSpot account. How do I do this? Let's create a custom HubSpot property called favorite ice cream flavor. First, we're going to head to settings and then we're going to click on properties located here in this left sidebar. Once we're here, let's click on create property. Good. For the label, let's type favorite ice cream flavor. HubSpot will now ask, okay, where does this property belong? Remember how I said that properties can exist for different objects? In this case, we're creating a contact property. So I'll just leave this option here, right? Remember that you can always create properties for different types of records, companies, deals, and so on. Good. In this case, we're creating a contact property inside the group contact information. It doesn't really matter because this is just an example, but just so that you know, you can add properties to different property groups as well. Typically, you are going to be creating contact information properties though. Okay, let's take a look at the field type. This decides how people will fill out the property. Is it text, a number, a date, a drop-down menu? Since I want people to select their ice cream flavor from a list, I'll choose drop-down menu. Let's add some options here. Cool. Once you're done, click on create and that's pretty much it. From now on, favorite ice cream flavor will show up as a property whenever you create or edit a contact. Ta -da! Mm, okay. Now that you know how to add contacts to HubSpot, you can follow the exact same logic to create other types of objects. For example, let's say I want to add information about Keanu Reeves' company. I have Keanu Reeves here in my HubSpot CRM. I want to associate a company with him. All I have to do is head to Companies and click on the orange button to fill out the company creation form, just like we did with contacts.
Once I'm here, I can associate this company with Keanu Reeves. By the way, it's the exact same way as if I was inside Keanu's profile and I would simply create a new company from here. This is also possible. Oh, wait, hold on. My sales rep is actually closing a super cool deal with this company here. So let's add a deal and associate this deal with both Keanu and his company. That way, all three are linked together inside HubSpot. The person, Keanu Reeves, the company, and the deal. And here you go, the deal is associated with the contact and the company. Whoa, amazing! You've just learned how to get started with HubSpot, you understand your HubSpot navigation menu, you know what the different types of objects are, how to add contacts to HubSpot using different methods, how to use and create properties, you learned a lot today. That's the foundation of the HubSpot CRM. If you found this helpful, smash that like button, hit subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorial and drop me a comment below. What property would you add to your CRM that HubSpot doesn't already have? Bye, see you next time!